Hey yo lizards! Welcome to my second process walkthrough tutorial up on YouTube. Today we're going to be learning how to make this hovercraft graveyard space render in Blender. I know all of you have been eagerly anticipating this video all over the internet. People are asking, how do I make a hovercraft graveyard in space in Blender? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Where's the go to hovercraft graveyard in space Blender process walkthrough? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And that's this video. We're doing that today. You asked for it and you've got it. So stay tuned, we're hopping in right after this video. Before we jump in though, I just want to note that the following screen recordings are all in 720p. This is my bad. I forgot to check the resolution of the screen recording. And because I made this mistake, I will not make this mistake again in the future. However, in the future, some of my screen captures still might be in 720p because I have a really old Mac, which struggles to run OBS and Blender at the same time. So just a warning on that front. Okay, that's about it. Uh, tie your hair back, strap on your seatbelts, and let's hope this video doesn't end in flames. Splat a LiDAR scan into your scene. Reassign origin, center scan in scene. Clean up using booleans. If you use booleans, you can avoid cat teeth edges. No good. Make some objects to complement your scan. Just start with a cube. Don't be a snob. Extrude like it's silly putty. Get funky with the inset tool. Shift G to select groups of faces. Check out the checkered deselect tool. This can be handy. Be smart about your squashing and squishing though, because if you want to make a custom shader for the object later and your object is non-manifold, you'll run into shading problems. Remember that the extrude tool is really two tools in one, duplicate and move. Canceling the move part does not cancel the duplication. So command Z like your project depends on it, because it does. It's a good time to play around with scale. It helps to assign various planes and sections to their own material. Change the color and rename. It will give you a sense of possibility and a rough pass of how you imagine the shading will go down. Now we've got a hovercraft thing and a broken gravestone. Sweet. Ask yourself what worlds you're bringing together. You know, like you're directing the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Make grandiose comparisons. It's good for the old inspo machine. This, of course, will inspire you to make a version of a Celtic cross. Celtic cross? Bring in a reference photo. Make a cube, dude. Make a cube. Extrude. Make another cube. Extrude. Rotate. Join with the bool tool. On my first try, I use the mirror modifier in order to extrude the cross from the side faces created by two loop cuts near the top of the pillar. It created lots of overlapping geometry. No good. Careful with the mirror modifier for this reason. Adjust the geometry so that it resembles a reference photo. Enjoy the extrude tube. Check that the normals are all pointing in the right direction. Make a cylinder, select an edge, shift S, cursor to selected. Move cylinder to cursor, rotate, extrude, then select the difference option under auto boolean. Rinse and repeat until we have a shape that matches the reference somewhat. Make sure to duplicate the cylinder be before using each as a cookie cutter. Otherwise, it will be difficult to create a cylinder of the same size. Clean up any strange geometry that the bool tool may have created. I like to check that the topology is clean with 3D print with the 3D print add-on. Make sure your bevel, you bevel the edges a bit, either with the bevel modifier or by hand in edit mode with command B. Note, sometimes after shading smooth, you might find the shading looks wonky. To clean this up, go to object properties, normals, auto smooth. Now, have an idea. Get your brain butt off that proverbial lobe couch and turn that grab bag of objects into something cool. It needs some context, like every tweet ever. What's this world like? 
Why is the cross and gravestone hovering in space? What is it for? Who is it for? I got it. Holograms. The cross will be a hologram and it will be floating in space. Not original? Sue me, I'm a product of my time. Come up with a story even if only your pet fish and left hangnail will hear it. Add the elements that will ground your work in some kind of world. Think like Douglas Adams, like your name is Ash, X Ash A12. I had, to, I had to look up how that was pronounced. Use some basic shapes to make a cylindrical screen. Have your friends participate in what you come up with. My pals did some cool translations of the phrase, spin up dead 10 bits revolutions per minute into Chinese and Arabic. The idea is that this hovercraft is in a futuristic trans-galaxy world. It's a machine that rotates and in doing so will bring dead people back to life for a cost because capitalism isn't dead yet. Someone's wanna back up, I guess. Time to flesh out the scene. All the energy you've saved not putting pants on this year, invest now in your work or researching add-ons. I added some grass to a plane with a free version of the add-on grass wald. Looks nice, saves a lot of work. I hear scatter is also a great floral fauna add-on. How does the grass survive in space, you ask? A glass lid bakery style. Create a sphere, center it, cut the cube in half with a bool tool and a plane. Select the edge loop and extrude down, shade smooth. Make some flowers to symbolize life in this profound commentary on the commodification of death. Extrude and resize to get a nice petal shape. Use the proportional editing tool to deform the mesh into something a bit more organic. Let the wiggle do the worm. Apply a subdivision surface modifier. Apply an array modifier and change the count size. Create a bezier, 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 curl, circle. Be sure that the bezier, bezier, circle, and the petal share the same pivot point. Add a curve modifier to the petal and select the bezier circle from the curve object drop down menu. Rotate the petal to change the angle of the petals in the array. Simply duplicating the array and scaling down concentrically will give you a full flower look. Make a stem. You know the drill. If you want to condense all the moving parts, first apply all the modifiers and Command J join the various layers. If you don't first apply the modifiers, you'll lose the petal arrangement. Consider the pros and cons of removing these parameters at this point in the process. Good for organization, not great if you want to adjust the look of the flowers later on. Duplicate the flower until you have a nice view. Feel free to adjust each individually so each has its own look. We already got the galvanized steel shader from the built-in materials library on our hovercraft, but let's spice it up. I'm hankering for a battered iron look. And luckily, a few nodes in Curtis Holt's procedural metal pack scratch this itch. I use the master iron and battered metal. These are just two nodes of a bunch that can be used to create various looks. Link in the description if you're curious. In the final work, I spent a bit more time fiddling to get a nice look. I followed a tutorial, link in the description, to create the shader for the wraparound screen. For the text, I exported an image with the text from Photoshop and inserted it into the chain of nodes right before the RGB split with an image node. To promote this cross from matter to hollow, we've got to add a cool looking shader. The hollow shader is a fairly simple setup, namely using the wave texture, sky texture, and an image of scan lines. The Coded's old tutorial inspired the setup. I added an orange outline for a sweet pop. In order to do this, I used the pointiness output from the geometry node. This can't be done if Blender doesn't have the faces to work with, and the cross hasn't been thoroughly subdivided, so add a remesh modifier. But don't apply it. Or if you're on a laptop like mine, you will have a small fire in your home. Now. We have this nice orange outline around the edges of the cross. Because we have some wonky beveling on the top of the cross, the shader is going to look a bit funny. Fix up that bevel and you should be good. For this demo, it's fine. For the hovercraft panels that you may or may not have assigned to a separate material, 
ensure that the faces of your choice are assigned to a separate material. In the shader editor, start with a texture coordinate node and a material output node. Add a wave texture and a sky texture. Hook up the wave texture to an emission node. Add a separate XYZ node and feed the Z output into the wave texture from the generated. Add a mix node. Plug in a transparent BSDF and emission node into it. Now, let's get some color up in here. I'm liking the way this yellow feels. Onto the gravestone lizards. We already have a nice texture because it's a scan, but adding some bump and adjusting the specular will kick it up a notch. A trick it took me a moment to figure out when adjusting bump. Hook up the texture to a color ramp so you can see how the texture changes as you slip and slide those sliders. It's like putting on your glasses. After, rehook the texture to the bump. The whole story falls apart a bit without the world shader, hey? For the stars, I simply used two noise textures in a Voronoi with the scale turned way up, plugged them into color ramps, and mixed. In the compositor, using the glare node, we'll get them to look more star-like. For the gradient, we are blessed by the blender gods with a gradient texture node with a spherical option. Sweet! Adjust the vector map node to move the gradient so that it complements the subject, and have fun with the colors. Time to light your scene! Use a three-point light setup. Don't fix what ain't broke. In addition to the key, fill, and backlight, arrange four area lights around the hovercraft to illuminate it better. I was having issues with fireflies, aka large noise spots. When troubleshooting, it seems that replacing strong lights with area lamps decreases the frequency of those fireflies. For the animation, parent all the objects to the hovercraft. It would be cool for the hovercraft to both rotate and bump up and down. To do this, simply add a keyframe at the beginning of the frame sequence, where the Z rotation value is 0 degrees, and at the end, where the Z rotation is 360 degrees. For the bump, I added a location and rotation keyframe every 50 frames, adjusting the Z location value and rotating the hovercraft slightly. Make sure that the starting and ending location is the same, so you can do a cheeky loop if you like. We made it to composting, compositing. Everyone should, it's good for the earth. Stars aren't stars if they don't shine, said the sequence manufacturer to the dance coach. This applies to Blender too. In order to apply the glare node to just the starry background, we need a cryptomat object pass to work with. With the cryptomat node hooked up, select all the objects in the scene to create a mask that covers them all. Multiply the mass to make the grays black so that we have a solid mask. Hook this up to an invert node, then a mix node set to subtract. Here, we're subtracting the black areas from the image. Now that we've subtracted the object from the image, we are left with the background and can apply the glare node to the background. Great. Now we can add the image back with a full composition and the effect should be applied just to the stars. But wait, the opposite is happening. Oh no, the world might end. What's the problem here? We don't need an invert node, which makes sense because we've already masked out the area that we want masked out with the cryptomat, cryptomat selection tool. Moving on to adjusting color. The color nodes are fairly straightforward. I recommend playing around with them to get a feel for them. When enjoying images, there's a lot that escapes the eye namely small imperfections, details, and distortions. For a scene such as this, including some of these imperfections will help the scene feel more dynamic and real. Let's add a vignette, a lens distortion, and some film grain. To create a vignette, simply create an ellipse mask, adjust as you see fit, to blur the edges, create a blur node and hook it up. Add it to the existing composition with a mix node set to multiply. Lens distortion in the compositor is easy. Yes, there's a node for that. Last, for the film grain. I downloaded a film grain node from the internet, link in description. I like what it adds to the work, makes it feel more real. If you'd like to render out an animation, 
I use the Open Image Denoise to render and apply the compositor changes directly to the render. For this example, we rendered out a raw version first so we can work with a visual in the compositor. Thanks for tuning into this video as I document my journey. I appreciate the support as I am a mere mortal in a world of blender gods and I am so happy to be here. If you want to support me, hit subscribe, like this video, and perhaps check out my Patreon if you want access to more frequent, frequent files and updates. Peace.